Howdy friends, Alicia Latrice here coming to you with another quick video in regards to the eight tips I followed to help me with my most recent successful frozen embryo transfer. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and you stay tuned for more as I drop those gems and share that with you. For those of you who are new to my channel, I most recently premiered my live at home pregnancy test. And if you have not yet watched that video, make sure you go back and watch that video because in the video I had um, shared my experience of doing a live at home pregnancy test as well as shared my first beta results that the fertility clinic calls and provided to me. And this video is specifically to share the best practices that I did to help me prepare for trans and I really feel as though if I had not done a lot done any of these eight tips that I'm not sure if this embryo transfer would have been as successful as it was for me so again it's one of these things where throughout embarking the IVF journey there are so many what-ifs and so many um, things I wish I would have known prior so any way that I can share my journey and those best practices with all of you to be that guide for your journey I would love to do so so the first tip I want to share with you all is start consuming pomegranate juice at least a week after egg retrieval. And the brand that I used was the Palm Pomegranate Juice. And the reason I started drinking the pomegranate juice a week after egg retrieval is because it helps with the thickening of your uterine lining. And of course, prior to you undergoing the um, embryo transfer, you have to get a uterine lining check to make sure that your uterine lining is eight millimeters or thicker. And a thick uterine lining um, betters the chances of that embryo sticking and snuggling right into your uterus. So first step, start consuming at least eight ounces of pomegranate juice every day after you have got undergone egg retrieval. For those of you um, who are doing many IVFs or not um, having to undergo the full IVF uh, journey, I say start drinking the pomegranate juice at least two weeks before having your transfer uh, that's set for you. So the second tip I would love to share with you all are pineapples. Oh my goodness, I had eaten tons of pineapples. And I say that at least two weeks before your embryo transfer, start eating one to four slices of pineapple each day. And then when you get to being a week before transfer, start still eat that one to four slices of pineapple, but also start eating one to two slices of the pineapple core. And you may be thinking, are you supposed to eat the pineapple core? Why would you eat the pineapple core? The pineapple core has so many therapeutic effects um, that are beneficial for implantation. The biggest thing is it contains a enzyme called bromelain. And bromelain is good as it's an anti-inflammatory as well as it acts as a blood thinner. And both of these things alone helps with the blood flow into the uterus, which the more blood flow that you have going to that area, um, the better it the better the chances of your embryo implanting in your uterus in turn a confirmed pregnancy. The third tip that I want to share with you all is acupuncture. Acupuncture was incredible before and after embryo transfer for me. And there are, and a lot of these that I'm sharing with you um, can could be considered old wives tales, but I swear by them and of course I'm sharing them to you. So it is best recommended that you start um, acupuncture at least a month before embryo transfer. In my um, case, I actually started acupuncture three days before embryo transfer. I went to an appointment an hour before embryo transfer, so the day of, and then I also went to an acupuncture appointment three days past transfer, and now I go to the acupuncturist one, one time each week. And the reason for acupuncture is it helps regulate your hormone levels, it helps reduce stress, and then it also increases the blood flow to the uterus. And as you notice, the past two steps also increase the blood flow to the uterus. And this is so important because if blood fl is flowing to the uterus and you have a thick uterine lining, it continues to increase the success rate of that embryo implanting. And another benefit that I, I have taken away from acupuncture, it was the best stress reliever. Many of you know that I battle with anxiety and depression. And with embarking this IVF journey, I had to stop 
all my antidepressant medications. And so I've been, been without those medicines and with going to the acupuncturist, I am so much more in a zenful place and it has just been so valuable because of course, this is a very demanding, stressful um, and tedious process that we're going through. So we still wanna make sure we're taking care of ourselves, taking care of our mental health, but acupuncture, if you have not yet started, make sure you go ahead and book that appointment um, because it will best suit your ovaries and your uterus and the blood flow and regulating their, those hormones for a successful pregnancy. The fourth tip I wanna share with you all is exercise and or walking 30 minutes each day. Many of you know and have been following me for quite some time. I have been, um, I have been on my fitness journey for the past almost four years now. So um, being very active is very important to me and it's very important throughout the IVF journey, even before you go through egg retrieval, before embryo transfer, because staying active keeps your um, metabolism going it keeps you very energetic and it also helps with continued blood flow throughout your entire body so if you do have transfer it is best recommended that you continue with light activity do not become an entire couch potato after about day three um, because you want to get up you want to get moving because you want that blood flow to continue to go to your uterus as your baby well as your embryo in turn baby snuggles into your uterus so please 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 make sure you are at least walking for 30 minutes whether that's around the house whether it's around your home apartment complex or even the park the fifth tip that i want to share with you all that helped me um, with a successful embryo transfer is eating a well-balanced diet and i say if you are newly going through your um, ivf journey you should start this at the very beginning but if you um, have placed your IVF journey on holes and just now kind of picking it up or you're just doing an overall embryo transfer, having a well-balanced diet is key. Um, this is key because you want to ensure that your body is receiving all the nutrients that it needs, as well as when you do become pregnant, these are the same nutrients that your baby will need as well to ensure that they're developing at the right speed, that their heartbeat um, is within the normal range. And of course, you just wanna all overall be healthy for yourself and be healthy for your baby. And so when I embarked the IVF journey, I actually um, implemented a Mediterranean style based diet. So this was a lot of veggies and a lot of uh, seafood in a sense, just because at the time I had been vegan for about three years, but because of some health issues I've encountered in the past, it was recommended to me to at least start eating seafood and become a pescatarian. So that's one less thing I have to worry about with ensuring that I have all the nutrients and, and all the, the vitamins and protein that I need to carry my baby as well as for me to be overall healthy. So a balanced diet is key, guys. I cut out eating fast food, fried food, a lot of carbohydrates. I stopped eating unprocessed foods completely. So a lot of those frozen go-tos I had to stop and I started preparing my foods myself um, as well as making sure that I was getting fresh options from the, the market here that's in my um, community. The six best practice I wanna share with you all is it is so important to meal prep in advance. So meal prep prior to your embryo transfer for three to five days to make sure you're covered for three to five days so you don't have to get up and prepare food or even have to stress about what you're gonna eat. And these foods should consist of warming foods. So this should be your soup, your chili, your ramen, your broth, um, things of that nature to help you. And these are very important because you wanna stay away from very cold foods because warming foods is told to really warm throughout your body as well as warm your uterine um, area, which helps the baby uh, snuggle right into your uterus as well. Um, giving you better chances of implantation. So make sure you go to that grocery store, prepare your warming foods to, to kind of hold you over for three to five days and stay away from any cold foods. Um, cold drinks are still okay. However, I did not consume cold drinks either. I drank a lot of hot lemon water um, and yeah, that was pretty much it because I couldn't drink tea or coffee. So I stuck to a lot of hot lemon water um, after transfer as I did not want to consume any cold liquids either. 
The seventh best practice I wanna share with you all is make sure you continue with any medications that your fertility clinic already has you on, as well as make sure you're taking all the necessary vitamins. You do not, this is such a crucial phase and you do not wanna go a couple days or even a day without administering any medications um, that you have to each day, as well as taking your vitamins. This will just make sure that your body is continuing to get all of the nutrients and vitamins that it needs to carry and implant your embryo into your uterus. Um, in the event, many um, people are placed on PO as well as estrogen prior to the embryo transfer. So make sure you are, whether you are on the patches, whether you're doing it orally, whether you're doing it as a, a suppository, make sure you are staying on top of those time zones. So for my case, I am on the estradiol patches as well as PO injections that I do in the glutes. And with that, I have a alarm on my phone that goes off every time it's time for me to prepare and inject the um, PO, as well as every other day when it's time for me to change out those patches. Stay really religious with this because we don't want any areas of opportunity of your body going into shock or kind of going array because it has missed a dosage or it was past time. So make sure you stay on top of those medications as well as those supplements. Last but not least, the eighth best practice I wanna share with you all is make sure that you pack everything that you need the night before transfer. So make sure you have your comfy attire already selected, you have your lucky uh, transfer socks, and that you have a clean home, all the things that you don't have to worry about after transfer because after transfer, you should really just be relaxing and resting for two to three days after transfer. So getting everything taken care of, your household um, and all those things prior, reduces the stress of all the things that you need to do because the morning of transfer, you should just be excited, doing your affirmations, meditating, going to the acupuncturist and getting ready for such an incredible and exciting time, which is ultimately the transfer. So pack everything the night before, take care of all things that need to be taken care of so that you can truly rest without stressing of what needs to be done for at least three days. I also say that prior to transfer, you should start your two week wait bucket list. This saved me so much just time stressing and worrying and having anxiety. Um, I went and purchased me a journal off of Amazon and I just mapped out what I wanted to accomplish in that two week wait, whether it was what books I wanted to read, what movies I wanted to watch, what crafty things I wanted to embark. So this will actually help keep you occupied, especially if you're like me and you have to wait the entire 14 days. You really wanna make sure that you're staying busy and you're not searching the web, looking at mis misinformation on the web. You're not really placing yourself into more worry about, you know, has my embryo implanted, has it not? Just because, let's, let me be honest, for the first three days after transfer, I did not go based on my bucket list. I spent so much time on Google uh, and so much time in a lot of these IVF community Facebook groups and, and some pages that I follow on Instagram. And I really believe it did me more harm than good. I was comparing my journey. I was thinking of all things that could go wrong. I was trying to see if the symptoms I was experiencing was the same as what you know the online articles and blogs say they should be. And this is a big no-no. You should be in a really zenful and peaceful place and really just resting and allowing your body and the embryo to do what it's gonna do. So please make sure that you map out what your two weeks will look like and really stick to it because the less worry, the less stress the better you'll feel and the better you have the chances of not placing your body into shock. And, and I truly feel as though what we feel, the embryo feels. What we feel and when we're pregnant, our babies feels 10 times ten times fold. And that was something my best friend told me. And I swear by that because even now that I have been um, confirmed pregnant, when I find myself in those moments where I'm upset or I'm angry, I start to cramp really bad um, in my lower abdomen. And that goes to show, I'm like, oh, Alicia, calm down, you know, meditate for a second. I do my wusa moments, but I'm a firm believer that what we feel, what we think um, kind of resonates through our entire body as well as to that embryo and or to that baby. So make sure you're in a simple place, you're really being kind and gentle to yourself and do a lot of self-care. 
so much self-care, whether that's, you know, go shopping. You can still do a lot of things that are light activity. You should still be walking. You should still be up and about. You are not, you know, you are not pre you're you're not being prevented from doing absolutely anything. And it's I best recommend you stay active to continue the blood flow and to continue to keep you busy as you wait for your first beta. So as I conclude this video, I want to share a couple more gems with you guys of some things that I did after my embryo transfer. So make sure you go and grab those Lucky McDonald fries. Um, make sure that you also wear your Lucky Pineapple transfer socks or any transfer socks that you may have gotten custom made. Um, there are tons of great customized IVF embryo transfer socks on Etsy.com. So just go on Etsy, go through the search bar and type in IVF transfer socks and you'll have an array of socks that you can purchase. If you go to my Instagram page, you will see my transfer post that I had made and I had some lucky pineapple socks that I actually purchased off of Amazon. So Amazon also has great pineapple socks just in case. I also say to laugh a lot. My um friend recommended um, so many TikToks to me to watch and my fertility doctor also recommended that laughing helps a lot with embryo transfer. So as you can imagine, I watched tons of movies on Stars, Hulu, Netflix. Um, I was killing the comedy section. I watched almost every movie you can think of and I was all over TikTok. Um, all the TikToks that my friend sent me, it was well appreciated because I laughed a lot for two weeks straight and it just also made me feel overall good and last but not least i would also recommend just take care of yourself be gentle to yourself i know that this journey has had so many ups and downs so many highs so many lows sometimes more lows than than that of highs but you must continue to be in a zenful and peaceful place because you are wanting to be with child you are going to you know carry your baby for the next nine months. So it's so important that you're taking care of your well-being and your mental health. I am a firm believer that this journey is not the easiest. To be real honest and raw with you, you guys have been following me and alongside of me of this journey and it has had more lows than highs, but at the end of the day, it's so worth it. So often as people, we are spending so much time thinking about all the things that can go wrong and we must shift our perspective to start thinking about all the things that can go right. Invest that time and that thought of all the things that can go right. Manifest and bring all of the positivity into the universe versus all of the negative negativity, the fear, and the worry. I cannot thank you guys enough for being alongside of me on this journey. We are just beginning. Please know that for any of you who are currently embarking IVF, going through IVF or have transferred, claim your baby, manifest this pregnancy. This is all just put into the universe what you want. I am always a direct message away. I am always a comment away. So any questions that you may have, please leave in the comment area. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, feel free to inbox me as well. I am an open book and anything, any clarity, any um, anything that I can answer for you or anything that I can share for you that I myself did, I am more than happy to because I wish I had someone as a guide for me prior to embarking this journey because it would have just given me so much more hope. It would have inspired me so much and I would have known what to expect. So I am here at your disposal for whatever questions um, or support that you need. You guys got this. Thank you so much and I will see you guys next time.